Can you fail the SALT test? How many assignments can you fail? How many lessons can you fail? I've seen lots of these questions and concerns posted online, and today I'm going to give you my integrated skills perspective on these questions. I'm going to talk about lessons, assignments, tutorials, extra help, and stick around to the end because I'm going to give you a three-step process which will give you results in addressing your concerns. So first of all, TPs, teaching practice. How many teaching practices can you fail? Well, really, the number is not an exact science. However, don't worry, if you do get three below standard lessons, your tutor will talk to you about this and tell you what you need to do in order to address it. But my advice is listen to your feedback, implement it, and try not to fail any of your teaching practices. CELTA requires a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication, so make sure you spend time with your lesson plan, thinking about how you're going to implement it and keep those lessons as student-centered as possible. So what about the question of assignments? How many assignments can you fail? If you fail more than two assignments, you're probably not giving yourself the best chance of passing the course. If you don't pass your assignment on the first attempt, it'll be given back to you for what's called a resub or a resubmission. This doesn't mean fail. A resubmission basically means that your tutor has found some areas that you need to fix. It rarely even means that you need to do an entire rewrite of your assignment. You usually just need to fix certain sections of your assignment. So pay attention to the feedback from your tutor and address those points that your tutor has pointed out to you. And don't give a half effort. Really read your tutor's feedback. If you don't understand it, contact your tutor to get further clarification. So once the feedback is clear to you, just make sure that you address exactly what is being asked of you. If you do that, then your assignment is probably going to be a pass on resubmission. And whether you pass it first time or on resubmission, it's all a pass. So you're good either way. So what about tutorials? On the CELTA course, you're guaranteed two tutorials, a stage one and a stage two tutorial. Every CELTA candidate will get those tutorials. However, if you are in any danger of failing the course, and this danger will be identified by your tutors, first of all, they will then give you a tutorial three. Sometimes you will get a tutorial three for other reasons. For example, if you are close to getting a very high grade, they might offer you a tutorial three. However, if you are in any danger of failing the course, your tutor will give you a tutorial three. And in that third tutorial, they will identify exactly the issues which you need to address in order to pass the course. So basically, your tutor is telling you, do A, B, C, and maybe even D, and you will pass the course. So what does this all mean? For teaching practice, assignments, and tutorial three, at every step along the way in these core areas of your CELTA, your tutors will tell you exactly what you need to do. So listen to it and incorporate their feedback into your teaching. If you're really struggling on the course to address feedback and complete assignments in accordance with the criteria and write lesson plans, you can, of course, reach out to someone like myself and I will help you address what has been asked of you so that you meet the criteria and pass your course. And lastly, at the start of the video, I said that I was going to give you a three-step process that will give you results if you implement this as I pointed out to you. So the three steps are record, identify, and rectify. So record. This can be done in a number of ways, and usually your tutor does it for you. When you do a teaching practice, your tutor will write notes on your lesson plan and will give you a feedback sheet. On the feedback sheet, they will tell you what went well and what you need to improve. When you finish TP1 and you're preparing for TP2, go and read the feedback from your tutor from TP1 and look at what went well and think about how can you further incorporate those things into TP2 and look at the things that you need to work on and think about strategies. Make those things personal aims for the following lesson. Make those the things that you want to focus on so that you can show your tutor you have worked on what they told you you need to work on 
and you are improving. As you move through the TP process, keep building on that so that all the things that you needed to work on, you have built on them incrementally over the TP process and all of the things that went well, you further solidified them and incorporated them into your overall teaching. Identify in feedback. Identify in your own self-reflections as well. This is a huge part of your development as a teacher, self-reflection. You need to be able to zero in on or pinpoint areas in your own teaching and that need work. You can do that a number of ways, simply just thinking back on your lesson, what went well, what needs work. Uh, you could voice record your lesson if everybody's okay with that. And then finally, rectify it. So as I said, take action. A great way of rectifying is write down the area for improvement as identified by your tutor or your own self-reflection or maybe even your peers have given you some things that they have noticed. Write it down on a piece of paper and then just brainstorm things that you can do to identify it. So for example, hi teacher talking time. Let's brainstorm that. Well, you could focus on eliciting more. And then from eliciting, you could think about, okay, how am I going to elicit more? Well, instead of explaining, I'm going to ask more questions. The last piece of golden advice I would leave you is listen to your tutor. Of course, my videos and all of the information online is a great help, but your tutor is the one who is working with you and your tutor is the one who knows what you need to do in order to pass the course. So really listen to what your tutor is saying. And if you don't understand it, you know, don't try to prove them wrong or anything. Just ask questions so that you do understand what is being required of you. Okay, let me know in the comments below which areas of the Celtic course that you found the most challenging. Was it the teaching practice? Was it writing lesson plans? Was it your assignments? And what did you do to address your own difficulties on the course? I hope you enjoyed today's video from the beautiful Canadian wilderness here on the Atlantic East Coast. It's an absolutely beautiful day, although a little bit cold. The sun is shining so, so strong. That's why I'm wearing my sunglasses. I'm gonna continue on with my hike now. Please do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. And if you thought it was useful, please do share this on your social media, on your Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any way that you can share this so that other people who might find it useful can also access this. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye and God bless.